man. Today on Survivor Man, I'm in southern Utah, and it's among the most mysterious and unexplored regions of the American Southwest. Ancient cultures have survived here and vanished in the breathtaking but brutal canyon land. And I'm going in for seven days alone. Awesome. Massive country. The ancient magic in these canyons is legendary. I'm in for the ride of my life. My crew will drop me in, and the local scout, Desert Dave, will be camped out many miles away until I get back. I hate this part! No water. Predatory mountain lions, nighttime chills, disease-carrying insects, loneliness and despair. These are the dangers and challenges of the Southwest Canyons. This is winter, in one of the most remote canyon lands of the American Southwest. It's no wonder Butch Cassidy and his wild bunch chose these remote parts to hide out from the law. But for now, it's just me, my camera, my horse, for the next seven days, alone. Dave knows a lot about surviving out here, but he's not telling me everything. I think people get kind of psychologically spooked out by some of the amazing energy that runs around these canyons. A lot of people that have come here and vanished, there's something happening here that's not like what he's used to. Well, I'm on my own now. Time to check out my surroundings, I guess. Here we go. This is some pretty amazing biking country. I figure if I had to, really, I could probably bike out of here in about three days. But hey, this is a survival show. Let's make it a week. Yeah, I do have a pack full of gear. It's all my camera gear and clothing. They left it for me. Like shooting your own horse to eat, I'll cannibalize the bike to survive. It's incredibly quiet here. Too quiet. I don't really know how much sunlight I have left. Well, let me tell you, one, two, three and a half hand widths, so that's about three and a half hours. I better find a place to settle down. Well, this juniper tree behind me is gonna make some pretty good shelter for me, but first I wanna get a big fire going. I figure if it does snow tonight, at least if I have a big fire going, you know, I can maybe make it through the night. It may not look like it, but snowstorms blanketed these canyons just before I got here, baked by the sun in the day and frozen solid at night. At least there's plenty of fire. Can you hear the jetway up there? Right now those people are eating lobster.
The temperatures in these parts are wild, swinging to huge extremes in a matter of hours. Oh, this is good stuff. Really good stuff. My biggest fear, can my body adjust? Fire starter and bedding. I'm gonna make a long fire that I can feed from one end. Then I don't have to worry about trying to break logs small. I'm actually gonna line this thing with rocks because the sand is actually pretty damp. Survival means multitasking and getting it done without breaking a sweat. If I sweat, the cold nights will be hard to handle. I've still got maybe two hours of sunlight left. Work on my shelter. This uh, ridge pole was a little bit lower than I wanted, so I dug a hole down a bit and then lined it with some uh, juniper bark and uh, this grass just to braise me up and it keeps me off the cold sand. And then I covered all of these branches and sticks in the, over top to protect me a bit, reflect some of the heat back once I do get a fire going. Uh, but this is about as much work as I want to do tonight before I get too sweaty. Sun's almost behind the mountains. Every time I come out and try survival in a new location, I like to test some kind of survival item just to see how it works. This time around, I'm gonna try this little item, magnesium flint stick. What I wanna do is shave off this magnesium. I need to make a little pile. You gotta be real patient. Well, that's not a bad pile. We'll see. I just don't know. Magnesium. There we go, there we go. Okay, okay, okay. Burn, baby, burn. Burning meat. Whoa! But that little magnesium stick is definitely a winner in my book. <laughs> nice to be under this juniper tree because it is chilling down really quickly as soon as that sun disappeared. So I guess I should show you what I have to survive with for the week. Always, of course, my multi-tool. You've already met Mr. Magnesium Flint Stick. And last, not least, huh. well, look at this. An old, shriveled up piece of energy bar. Mmm. And some corn chips. Wow. I'd say that's about enough to last a week, wouldn't you? Inedible, but useful. Well, there's snow up in the mountains, and just a few miles from here, devastating flash floods, wiping out everything in sight. And I hear that bobcats and mountain lions come down into these valleys at times like these, searching for food, easy food, sleeping food. That was one frosty night. Ground's all frozen now and frosted over. Really, it was just a matter of sleep a half hour, wake up, feed the fire. Sleep a half hour, wake up, feed the fire. And 
just pray for morning. I don't believe it. I can't find any water in this area at all. And yet, there's a creek down in the canyon cut. But guess what? I can't get to it. Because everywhere I look, it's like a 30 foot drop and I can get down in there, but I'd never get back out again. Have a look. See what I mean? Well, how frustrating is that? A beautiful canyon cut, a flowing creek, and I can't get to it. That's called getting ledged up in cowboy terms. Come to a spot like this, you get down, you can never get out again. You can't get to the water, you die of dehydration. And at the moment, I'm ledged up. This is all the water I can find in this whole slick rock area. All it is is a little bit of frost melt. When Butch Cassidy and his wild bunch came through here, they sometimes had to shoot a horse just to eat. It's time to retire my trusty horse. The parts on this bike could save my life. I shivered through last night because my shelter was thrown together so quickly to beat nightfall. I'm hustling now to insulate it, and the bike frame makes a great supporting wall. Try not to take too much to hurt the tree. It exposes them to bugs. Out of respect for the environment, I took this bark from several trees. I think in time I could probably maybe even weave a really nice bed out of this, but for now, I think just pulling it in loose like this, keeps it lofty, probably good insulation as a result. This temperature can be deceiving. I'm tempted just to kind of kick around in the sun. That could be the death of me. It can go well below freezing in just a few hours. This shelter can never be insulated enough, it can never have enough firewood. See that? Look. Beautiful, isn't it? Well, the beauty fades fast, especially when you're cold and alone. A general rule that survivors use to gauge the odds of survival is called the five W's. Wood. Well, there's plenty of wood for burning and for shelter. Weather. Weather's pretty good right now. If it did turn bad, there's places that I can get in and protect myself. Widowmakers. Well, there's nothing tall, standing, and dead that's gonna come crashing down on me in the middle of the night and kill me. Wigglies. Scorpions, spiders, snakes, they're all buried deep in the ground this time of year. I don't have to worry about them. But water. Well, water. There's none of it. Without a good supply of water, I may have to move on at daybreak. Off to bed. Feel a lot better with a shelter like this now, I'll tell you. All closed over and hopefully warmer thanks to this juniper bark and the fireplace. It's too bad I have to leave. The shelter is just right, but I need a drink and this place is dry. The strapping from inside the bike tire is perfect to bundle up this juniper bark. And the bark is great insulation and way too valuable to leave behind. 
The crew will have to fly in later to clean up the site. This is an amazing sight. You guys see what I'm looking at here. I'm thinking down there is water. Big canyon like that's got to be a flowing creek. And uh, water is what I need. So I'm going to take the chance on it. Find a way down. It's got to be at least a thousand feet straight down. Okay, now I'm pretty sure that I can find my way down in this canyon. What I'm walking on is a fresh cattle trail. Yeah, that's right, I said cattle trail. They know the way down. There are cattle roaming throughout here, free range. Cattle don't mean salvation, that's for sure. Ow! Okay, tell you what. Stay the, as dedicated as I am to getting some good shots here. This canyon's getting too steep. I gotta strip down a bit and uh, stop filming. It's too much work going up and down, setting up these cameras. I just gotta get down there. All right. <clears throat> I'm ready to head down. Take the little camera with me. Maybe I can talk to you on the way. Oh. This is when the camera gear really gets heavy. Should have taken my pants off before I walked this. That is where I came from. It's a long way down. I better check this place out. <laughs> this is not good news. Let me show you where I just walked. This is my creek down in the valley bottom. Dry as a bone. Your body needs to thermoregulate, and part of that is your cells need to shrink and expand. And if you don't get a drink of water, you can't do that. You can sleep all night in lots of insulation next to the fire and still be cold all the time. Not good news. It's a long way to come and not have water. I'm getting thirsty. My mouth is tasting stale. My head Starting to hurt a bit. I know that's from dehydration. Not drinking enough. I haven't peed in a long time, that's a bad sign. A small patch of snow to keep me going until I can find shelter. I searched a long stretch of this canyon floor for some good shelter. A lot of caves that I thought from a distance looked great. Up close, they're either too high to get to or too small to snuggle into. And most are pack rat dens anyway. This one is facing south and it could keep me warm on sunny days. So caves are great for people, but there's a lot of creatures that have set up their living in there that are dangerous to us. Uh, and they carry black plague or bubonic plague. It's hanta, which kills you a little faster. Anaphylactic shock from being bit by uh, the kissing bugs that live on bats and pack rats. I think this cave is ready for an extreme makeover.
I've leveled out the floor inside here. I put up a rock wall and area for a fire on the inside here. Then what I need to do is get a fire going in there and start to warm up the cave very gently, very slowly. Well, I knew once I got my fire going that I'd probably want a big one just to get some good coals first. So I thought I'd set my fire up in a little flat area there, get a big fire going, and I can transfer some coals over to here and start a small, low fire to help warm up the cave. You've got to be really careful. This is a deadly situation. It wouldn't take much to thermal crack this wall and have a Cadillac-sized rock come crashing down on top of me. So I'll need to heat the cave very slowly to keep the rock intact and maybe smoke out any pack rats that might be deep inside. You know, everywhere I go to survive, it's pretty intense and pretty special. This place, it's magical here. Not sure. It's the strangest I've ever felt, really. As in this canyon, I mean, I'm just corralled in by it all. And to know that the Anastasi were here and the Paiute and Butch Cassidy and his gang, it's, it's a lot of history here. One of the traditions of the Paiute people were to take this rabbit brush, to take this plant, and uh, they would burn it uh, into the cave on their first burn just to ward off evil spirits and ghosts and such. Seems to me like a good idea. Desert Dave told me that these canyons were the most remote in the southwest, and as a result had the densest population of mountain lions. Locals fear coming down here, as I have, unarmed. One of the uh, fire rocks just uh, blew up on me. Sent big coals right into my bed and burned my finger trying to clear it out. Oh, it's going to feel a little strange sleeping in here. I'm sure I'll be thinking about this rock over my head constantly. <sighs> well, that was some night. Oh, I must have slept better because both my fires went out. The little one up in the cave is out and cold. But this one just has a little tiny bit of residual heat. Maybe I can turn it back into a flame. Remember this guy? Ooh. If I just blow on the ashes, they'll all fly away, and that'll be the end of it. But when I slip this small tube from my bike down through the middle and focus it into the last hot bit of ash, I can gently coax the surrounding charcoal back into red embers once again. This way, I don't use any more of my magnesium stick. Saving resources wherever I can is the survivor's code. Okay, like maybe right now. There we go. Now, I'm gonna put these corn chips in, believe it or not. All that effort and a couple of corn chips was worth it. The chips keep the first flames burning well thanks to the oil they're cooked in. I'll show you what I mean about those corn chips. Look. See that? And it holds its flame just like a little tiny candle. So if you don't have much tinder, and you happen to have some corn chips in your pocket, like I did, then it's a great way to help get your fire going. Because that grass went out quick on me. And then you can transport your flame to wherever you need it. Or you can eat them. Well, on my trail down into this canyon along the way, I mentioned that I was following a cow trail. So I decided to grab myself not just your ordinary cow patty. Well, okay, it is your ordinary cow patty, but it's got a special job. Cow patty like that, given that it's a little bit damp, may smolder for as long as a, an hour to an hour and a half, which is a good thing if you want to keep the coals going in your little fire pit and not burn up your wood.
It's already day four, and I haven't had a decent drink of water yet. Well, I've been searching up and down this creek, and all I'm finding is damp sand. Well, it's wet, but it's not wet enough. Hunger is nothing compared to a quick approaching death by dehydration. Oh, well, finally, promising. A little touch of water here. This is one little puddle. And by the signs of the, the mouse poop close by, they drank out of it too. So, I wouldn't advise drinking out of a puddle like this with mice around, but I've got to have water. Oh my gosh. You gotta be really careful entering these canyons. Even the bigger ones too, not just these slot canyons. If there are storm clouds in the air, or if there's been a lot of warm weather like I'm getting, it might melt the snow up on the mountaintops. You could find yourself stuck in the middle with a big wall of water coming at you and no escape. Four days of deadly silence in these canyons. That whole, it's quiet, yeah, too quiet, kind of feel. Makes you wonder if even the raven is real. Ah, oh, Brother Raven is calling me. I think he wanted to tell me that I was close to something good here. <gasps> it's nice to have his company. I'm happy, though, because I found some water here. It looks like it's a seepage of water. I don't think I even need a drinking tube for this one. I'm glad I found some water. Makes life a little more bearable. Quenches my thirst a lot better than little bits of snow. But I've got to make a real concerted effort at trying to get some food. The only realistic meal I can catch around here is rat. The Paiute string deadfall is amazing. A simple but deadly bit of ancient technology. It combines cord making methods with leverage and balance principles. Pure physics, really. A stone cold end to unsuspecting prey. See that? Got the rope tied around my little notch here, and tied around. This guy here, too. Yucca. Just a single leaf, I guess, from the yucca plant. These little fibers sort of just use the yucca as a binding. This is my little bit of energy bar that they so graciously allowed me to have, but let me show you how we can turn this, well, at least I'm gonna hope I can turn this into a lot more substantial food. All I need is a little tiny piece, not much at all, just like, just to mush it up. Mm. Be careful not to eat it. There. Just a little tiny bit. See, I don't want to give these guys food to go away with. Because I've mashed it into the end of this stick, he's going to have to work at that to get it. Now for the hard part. I can keep my mind off of hunger by doing something proactive, like building and setting up these traps. Problem is, this activity is all about catching food. Now I'm even hungrier. Okay. See the trigger? You got your 
top piece, the string, little trigger stick there, which puts pressure on this string, this stick here, and it goes up underneath and just sort of lodges onto the rock. I gotta go make a few more of these. Wish me luck. Another five or six traps should at least better my odds at finally having a meal. This is a nice discovery. That's a big pool of water. It's a good inch frozen on top, though. Cool. Uh, all right. The inner tube makes for a perfect canteen. Now have a look at what I found. It doesn't really matter where you go. Everywhere on this planet, somebody has been and left behind garbage. Mm-hmm. This looks very promising. One man's garbage is another man's treasure. This is Mormon tea. It's got ephedra in it, and uh, it can actually give you a nice energy boost. I've been gone a number of hours, and that cow patty is still red hot and smoldering. Just add dried grass, and I've got fire again. That improves life significantly. Even have a lid. I spent time cleaning all the rust out of this tin can with the available sand. Eating or drinking any wild plants is extremely dangerous unless you know exactly what you're doing. Cheers. Five days without a meal can play on your mind, and this wild tea has got a kick to it. <coughs> the solitude, the crazy temperature swings, the long hike down the canyon, it's all taking its toll. Maybe this explains all those grisly canyon legends of lost minds and missing souls, where things get unreal. Five days without food. Well, I'm in trouble once again. My little puddle that was so fresh and clean is down to, well, I'll drain it out just with this right now. And unfortunately, the closest source of water other than this is uh, that one silty puddle. It's fairly deep, but it's a half an hour walk away from here. See these two rocks here? Look, these just didn't happen by chance. These were placed here. They are the perfect fit to each other for a Paiute deadfall. Exactly the same type of deadfall that I'm using to try to catch pack rats. Just like this one here, which is one of the five that uh, I have set right now. But guess what? It's sprung. So, I haven't opened it yet. I don't know if I've got a meal, but we're gonna find out. With every failed trap, my hunger grows. I actually expected to find something under these traps, but they're not even knocked down at all. I'm just gonna knock this one just to show you just how effective uh, they can be. One last trap to check. I think it's down. Let's go find out. 
No need for big fanfare this time because the first one had nothing, so. Whoa! Well, what do you know? I'll show you with this guy here. I think it's a type of a ground squirrel. I'm gonna call it dinner. Remember the spokes from the bike? This skewer will put distance between myself and the squirrel. The plague is still a very real possibility down here. Time to go shopping. squirrel. I'm gonna need to cook this guy really well. So I'm gonna get him on the fire now. Let him cook for a good long time. Once again, I've been able to use a piece off the bike. It's gonna help me cook this little fella. Just use the brake cable. Hook in through his head there. And now I'm just gonna let him cook good and slow. What I'm gonna do is singe all of the hair off and cook him very well. Just in his own case like that just to make sure everything is, in terms of diseases and parasites, has been taken care of. Now look, I don't like to kill anything at all, but this shows you that with a little bit of ingenuity and determination, you can get yourself a meal if you truly are lost and need to survive. All of this camera work, combined with actual survival, makes hunting and gathering any food at all vital to my ability to carry on. Now these juniper berries, while they do taste absolutely horrible, eating a couple of them will help to, uh, because of the chemicals in them, it'll help to prepare my stomach for eating meat, make it easier to digest. You know, a lot of archaeology is, oh, I can just hear the squirrel sizzling over there. A lot of archaeology is based on uh, what they find in terms of stone tools, rock tools, things that are chipped into other things. And uh, the Paiute around here and the Anastasi were both terrific at what's called flint napping. This is a piece of rock just from laying around in this area. And uh, this is a hammer rock, which is an actual artifact from this area just laying on the ground. You see the chipped end. It was used for turning big pieces of rock into little pieces of rock, into knife points, arrowheads, and spear tips, and those kinds of things. That's really what flint napping is, so I'll see if I can use it. Aha! Success! See that? That little guy. It's very, very sharp. This thing is so sharp, it just cuts right through. He's definitely not cooked through yet. Flip over, use the other side of this flake because I'm going back up the top again. And I'm sorry if this looks disgusting, but it's no different than a chicken or a pig or a turkey or anything else. I'm not satisfied that he is cooked all the way through yet. So... I'll need to cook it right through to make sure any parasites are dead. Oh. Oops, my squirrel's burning. dinner. Oh. Whoa. Pretty charred on the outside, but so it should be. Ugh. Well, what I'm not going to eat is the entrails, being, being the uh, intestines and such, but uh, you know, the heart, the kidney, the liver, 
all good stuff to eat. There's my meal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save all the bones and I'm gonna cook them even more. I'm gonna have them for breakfast. Good bout of calcium. So inside here, I've got, yeah, there's the, uh, looks to be the heart. Nope, that's the liver. There's my squirrel. Good. Well, tonight for a little extra warmth, I'm gonna use hot rocks. I'm just taking these rocks, I got four like this, and I'm just putting them in close to the fire, get good and hot. I'm gonna tuck these in like this as I sleep, and they'll keep me warm, good and warm, for quite a long time. I've got four, and I'll just rotate two. Two heating up, two on my body, two heating up, two on my body. Water is still a big problem though. It's a long way to get it. Breakfast. Get you up in the morning. It's chewing on some cold squirrel bones. That was a cold night. You know, I'm just not sure what the toughest part is the constant search for water or this huge fluctuation between very hot days and bitterly cold nights. I don't think I could do another night like this, though. The food made me even thirstier, but at least cleared my mind. Maybe these canyons have beaten me. The outlaws used to lure lawmen in here to starve them out, and they called it box death. Film or no film, I need more water to survive. All right. You know what? I'm not going to do another day. It's going to take me all day just to hike out of this canyon. Climb all the way back up. I'm getting out of here now. Survival is ultimately about getting out. In my case, I'm still strong enough to do so, so I'm heading back while I still can. Well, of course I had to come back from the camera. What'd you think? So now begins my long climb up out of the canyon. And you know what? This time, I'm making the crew come back and pick up this camera. See you next time. Bye.